Live. This hangout is live. Woo! I've never done this before. I want to say welcome. Thank you, everyone, to this awesome digital party because, you know, I'm old and a mother, so I stay at home now on Friday nights. <laughs> <laughs> But I just want to say thank you, beautiful women, for joining me to celebrate um, something really special to me, the, the launch of the music video for Madre Tierra. So please introduce yourselves one at a time. Let's say start thank with... Thank you, beautiful women, for joining me to celebrate um, something really special to me, the, the launch of the music video for Madre Tierra. So, please introduce yourselves one at a time. Let's start with you. Beautiful women for joining Can me. Can you guys hear that? Um, yes. Why is it echoing forever and ever? Music video for Madre uh, yeah, I think it's because we've got our microphone. Microphone. Um, microphone. I'm going to mute our microphone. Wait, wait, wait. Um, okay. Maybe because we're going live on YouTube and it's like picking up all the pages. I'll cancel it. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay, bumps in the road. <laughs> Jolene <laughs> Levin, please introduce yourself first. Hi, everybody. My name is Jolene Levin. I am the national chairperson of a firm. I am also uh, a union organizer for my paid work, um, and I'm really happy to be here on behalf of the, all the transnational women um, and a firm which fights against militarism for immigrant women's rights and against trafficking. Kara Mack? Hello everyone. I'm Kara Mack and I was graciously offered to be in this beautiful video. I was the person that was planting the seeds but I'm also a singer, dancer, and founder of Africa in America Music, Dance, and Culture Magazine. Hello everyone. Marta, Dr. Marta Gonzalez. Hi, my name is Marta Gonzalez. I am a Chicana artivista, um, singer, songwriter for the band Quetzal, and I'm an assistant professor for a historic women's college called Scripps College. And my producer, director, visionary, Kimberly Bautista. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Kimberly Bautista, I'm calling in from Guatemala and I'm also the director of Justice for My Sister, it's a collective based in Los Angeles and we also have a chapter out here in Guatemala and it was really an honor to collaborate on this, on this video. Cool. And I think we lost um, Saini, we lost Sister Native, hopefully she will join in. Again, who is beaming in from Sydney, Australia. Um, anyway, so I'm sad we lost her, but hopefully she'll join in again soon. So, first of all, I just want to know what you guys thought of the video. Dope, dope, dope. Be beautiful, beautiful images, amazing words, uh, inspiring. And then beautiful faces to see on that video as well. Yeah, very, very nice. I felt happy to be a woman, actually, and then with in the end, with all of the the warriors, the fighters, I was like, yeah, that just gave me like extra juice to go out there when I get tired <laughs> after a long day. I was like, yeah, I feel fired up. So beautiful job. Thank you. I think. Um I saw it and I thought, like, this is organizer fuel, you know, this is what we need. I want to show this in, like, our educational discussions. I want to show this to, like, the young women that we're teaching in our summer schools of youth activism. Like, this is important. This is important work for, for us women in the women's movement. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Kim, do you want to take it away? <laughs> Sure, yeah, I feel that, you know, for me, this piece is really about, um, I think, in the process of creating and visualizing how this was going to turn out, um, it was really a process of, like, 
listening to the lyrics and also understanding how we can visualize our own healing, our own decolonizing um, as a people, as women, how our the subjugation of women's bodies is very much tied to the subjugation of the land and how, Maya, I mean your lyrics are just so inspiring to really talk about the value of women's bodies, the value of the land and how we can reclaim that in a, in a way where we, we're also um, really looking towards healing the generations to come, but also looking towards healing um, these ancestries that sometimes we have to reimagine because we don't always have documentation. And so um, I love this notion of like incorporating animation and kind of creating almost like a collage of different textures, um, bringing in archival footage of women who you name in such a beautiful way in the film or in the in the song itself and then also um, just the the recognition of women who have been murdered by the state or by misogynistic violence um, is just so powerful so I think um, th there's just so many different dynamics and different layers to this video and so we really wanted to to honor that in bringing the visual aspect to it. I never asked you why you um, wanted to do the, uh, the animation or what you envisioned for that world like you know the with the hummingbird and <laughs> and everything else but why why that world? Yeah so the idea was really to create like a parallel world where we could reimagine what healing looks like, where we could reimagine what um, healing our ancestors means and also healing future generations. And so a lot of times um, there are certain, I mean, and this is why I really love the work that Affirm is doing right now, talking about stretching our imagination and, and really imagining that revolution, that, that what, what does liberation look like, right? And so I feel like this video is very much in conversation with a lot of conversations that a firm has been holding both formally and informally with artists and um, that was pretty crucial and and also you know just the fact that this song for me is epic I mean we're talking about generations of, of trauma and also what it would mean to Re, um, reimagine the healing of that. So, so yeah, um, I think that's where the animation comes in, is trying to stretch that imagination and really pull in on that possibility. What's, what's, what does possibility look like for healing and liberation? Well, I want to, so I also need to acknowledge Sister Native, you're back on the call. <laughs> Welcome. Um, but I wanted to acknowledge Kara Mack because it's because of her that this song exists. Um, Quetzal Flores produced the track and he had um, uh, the, the poetry already sung by Jose, uh, Joel Cruz Castellano from um, Castellanos, I should say, from Los Cojolitos. And I had the song for a really long time and I, I actually wrote it three different times. I wrote three different songs. Songs about healthy living, songs about non non GMO food, a song against Monsanto. Like there were so many versions of this, but it never felt right. It never came out right. Um, and it was wasn't until Kara asked me to um, write a poem for Women Rise Up Balance, your show that you did last year, that I um, finally I adapted that poem that I did for your show and I said this is what Madre Tierra is about this is this is what the song needs and so I inserted that and then I wrote the, the third verse so maybe we should even go back to um, Kara your inspiration for putting that performance on and and what you tried to achieve with that show and also you know African America magazine well basically when I started Africa and America magazine, I knew that I wanted to begin to do showcases for people for people who actually perform and take seriously the technique of any African diaspora music and dance style. And I wanted to also show the academic world that 
traditional arts don't necessarily mean that they have to only stay in the past, that it can be applied to whatever the theme is of the time. So we don't have to make something contemporary to be able to address contemporary issues. So I wanted to start doing showcases where with choreographers like myself, where we can take old rhythms and music that people have been doing for centuries and apply it to social injustice. So the first year we dedicated it to For Our Boys and then the second year because I actually had a conversation with a woman and she said, what bothers me is how can I fight for the men that hurt me? And that stuck with me. And I was like, wow, the second year I need to call it um, Woman Rise Up Balance because we have to realize that it's not really like man on top, woman on top, that it's about balance and it's about the need for both, need for the masculine and the feminine, need for the balance of both and how we need to work together, but also the fact that we do need to make sure that woman, you are important and you need to rise up and know your importancy. So I knew that po like a uh, poem had to start like the, like pre-intermission, after intermission, I needed mm -hmm. a poem. And the first person that I thought of was Maya. I was like, Maya has to spit because poem, but I needed it to be from a warrior type spirit. I didn't need anything light. I needed someone who would be able to not be verbose, not be wordy, but totally, totally make her point and make everybody, both the feminine and the masculine, understand the importance of of women and Maya killed it like everybody was floored by her poems and I was so happy because it opened up room for people to see then the dance pieces that preceded it so I'm so thankful that Maya was able to be there I didn't even know she was pregnant on top of that so that was like oh my so you're really in your emotions right now be, yeah. be being a mother of two it was horrible. I cried through the whole second one thought he was an act and I was like no I'm just, oh, I'm just, oh. yeah, I was like so you're really <laughs> consumed by your emotions so you would be able to communicate that well and people responded to it and people were so inspired so when she told me that she did a song based off of what she wrote I was like I am now humbled and inspired that you did that so yeah I'm forever grateful for that. So it was only natural that I asked you to perform in the video. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. women that's sowing the seeds. <laughs> yeah totally forever grateful for that yeah amazing experience amazing. Sister Native, before you drop out again, please introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so here, unmuted. Hello, everyone. So I'm Sister Native. Um, apologies, I missed a little bit of what has just been spoken about. But hopefully I'll be hanging out with you all for the next duration all the time. <laughs> um, so what is it? I have to introduce myself. Yeah, just a little bit about yourself and maybe your thoughts on the video. Ah, brilliant. It's beautiful, Maya. It's always strengthening to see you, to hear you, and it's been so long. I know. <laughs> um, beautiful and colourful. I can feel um, your growth being so far away from your home city, one of your home cities. So um, that's always a wonderful thing. It's always a surprise. So I'm always looking for that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I can I can see the changes in terms of the things that you're creating, and I can feel um, I don't know the other women around you through what you're creating. That's beautiful. <laughs> I can really feel that. You can really <laughs> you can really. Um, I'm actually excited in terms of what people here will perceive of you and your newness um, and the things that you're creating at the moment um, in terms of 
not just this video, but you know, like the music that you're creating and the um, the stories that you're telling um, and retelling and 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 finding like the the different levels of womanness um, that you're obviously uncovering not only in yourself but in the community that you find yourself surrounded by. I miss you. I miss it makes you. me miss you. <laughs> It's nice that I just got all my friends to to say nice things about the video. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good thing. Anyway, um, so yes, it's about raising each other up. Yes, mm -hmm. I know yep. exactly. And Jolene, as as Kimberly said, okay, so your work, your firm's work, actually has been a really big inspiration for me. Because I see the power of, you know, this collective and what you guys do and, and what you're achieving and even, you know, the International Women's Day March and the, just the strength in the numbers and it, you're all not just about talk, you're about action. And for me, I felt like that was kind of a kick up the butt, like, okay, what's my action? Okay, I'm an artivist, I have to use my voice. I need to contribute songs. I need to contribute music. And having a discussion with uh, with Marta the other day, because I was asking her about the press release, I was like, "Well, how do I articulate this?" And she said, "You know, you're within artivist tradition, which is um, providing inspiration." Maybe Marta, you want to talk about that because you're the biggest artivist I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah, no, thank you, guys. Um, you know, I think that. It's not just about it's. I think it's definitely what we were talking about. Maya um, is is creating the kind of work that will instigate critical thought and people to have these dialogues, um, creating spaces, and then also engaging people in it. Right. So the the kind of work that you do in community, you know, um, getting people to really think about and participate as well. I think is also really important. So we create definitely. Um, you know, we have to feed ourselves, so of course we do the work that we do and sometimes we sell it. We give a lot, most of it away, right? But for the most part, I think the idea is to bring communities into a kind of dialogue to for us to continue to talk about, um, get people to really, really um, uh, talk about the sorts of issues that we bring up. And what I really found inspiring about the video and, and, and the lyrics, of course, is... Um, well, first, when I heard it was called Madre Tierra, I mean, first of all, I've been listening to the song throughout because my my partner Quetzal Flores, um, you know, recorded the helped Maya record the song, but um, to listen to it throughout, but then really get to hear it and then see the images, um, I was really happy to see that um, everybody's being called to action. There's a, a big critique that Vandana Shiva actually. Um, you mentioned her, but she, there's a big critique that Vandana Shiva has where she talks about how oftentimes, you know, the earth is obviously gendered, right, as woman. And um, in that way, you know, man has pillaged her, has, you know, you know poisoned her. And, um, and because she's associated with women, and uh, it almost comes across as if only women are responsible for what happens to the earth or the kinds of strength that like men are exempt from participating or, or other people, right? Only women, right? Cis women can participate in the protection of the earth in power and strength. And um, that's kind of almost the assumption that people have if you're not really in the, in the deeper discussions. But I don't think this video necessarily does that. I think that the video, the images, the, the, the kind of call to action that you're making, the different references to throughout history about power and the way that power can be um, transmitted and how we can participate is calling everybody into action. And I think that's really important, right? So that when we talk about Madre Tierra, it's not just about the women that are responsible and are, are being hailed, right? It's about, it's about everybody and everybody's responsibility to participate in stopping um, all kinds of state-sanctioned violence, not just on the earth, but on other uh, other human beings, right? And not just on women, on children, on you know whatever it is that um, who all oppress people. And I think that's really important. We can't stop it thinking about we can't stop thinking about how everybody is responsible. 
Yes, definitely. And I think that was um, also one of the points of the song for me was to also acknowledge. Um, that's why I, I wrote. I researched a lot. Of, I watched so many Bandana videos because that was the first writing that I did of the song. <laughs> was trying to write a song from her perspective, but um, just to kind of look at my heroes, people that I look up to that inspire me, and that's why at the end of the song, Jolene, you get a shout out. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, she's all shy. But just everybody, you know that, um, and all those, and also all those moments. Because I think about, you know, the young girls like Dejiria who's at a swimming pool party and ends up getting beat down on, you know, international media. Um, the violence that she experienced over and over again through people sharing the video as well. But I think about how has her life changed since that incident and... I also heard a story about some university women who went, went to a protest, a peaceful march, and ended up getting arrested, and it politicized them. They thought, oh, we had no idea what was going on, but now that we've experienced this, now we're woke, you know? Now we understand, and now we're a part of the, the, the fight and the resistance. So I wanted to get into also those moments and, and just sort of think about what that looks like and, and what are the moments that all of us women got woken up or became um, a person that started thinking about these things and when did that happen and what is that force that made that happen and, you know, just, I don't know, thinking of it from that perspective. <laughs> ah, so much. That's great. That's great. I mean, I, you know, and that's what, what we do, right, as activistas, that's sort of that's the intention to instigate critical thought and create things like this, right? Where people can come back if there's a doubt about the significance of the video, people can come back and listen to some of these discussions. The way you also bring other people together to, to work together, all the uh, powerful women on this chat are, are are now connected, you know, and they've worked together and they're you know they're in the lyrics and they're behind the the screen and they're you know creating the images and you know, they're creating the dance and they're, you know, and so that's, that's creating community, creating these spaces, you know, mm -hmm. that's great. Congratulations, Mama. Yeah, congratulations. I, um, the, there were some particularly, like, uh, compelling, I guess the sections to me are really compelling of, of the video. Um, Mar um, uh, Maya, what you were saying about these like moments that someone becomes politicized, this moment, that, that moment when someone becomes radicalized, like that that makes uh, that makes these shiros very real and very human, um, and it makes it seem like you don't have to you don't have to be someone um, exceptional mm. to be to be them, right? Like all of us have that capacity. And then the way that you and and Kimberly lay out like both the genocide that's taking place against women and against the earth simultaneously, but then the way you present it also gives hope. So I think that a lot of times we're either stuck in one or the other, and it was, it was like a good bridge. Like this is what's happening, but don't worry. Like we have a way to do this, and like you're part of that. It's it's not just these women that you see in the news that that have the capacity to to get us to this like place of liberation. So when I when I watched it, I was like, oh, this is making me happy. I just came off a really hard campaign. Like this is this is like literally organizer fuel. So I I thought it was I thought it was like a great conversation, actually. The the video itself. Do you think? I mean, do you think this is something that? can reach people or do you think people don't want to hear this message? Am I preaching to the choir? Because like, I always think, you know, you make this music and you hope that it gets out there, but do people really want to hear this or do they want to just kind of listen to, you know, junk food music? <laughs> I mean, it's like the, the reality of it is I, I feel that a lot of people escape to the junk food music because it's like escapism. Yeah. However, 
Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, basically like trying to deny the big elephant in the room, and that's reality. <laughs> so it's like that mentality that's flooding mainstream. But I truly believe, like, since I've been a little girl, I, I always would see Maya Angelou and um, – and hear her say repeatedly over and over and over, like in books or when she's talking, but the, the notion of, you know, you necessarily don't remember facts, but people remember how they feel. And it's like songs like that, people can deny externally, like, oh, okay, it's a, it's a socially conscious song. Oh, okay, that's, that's the direction that Maya is going or so-and-so is going. But... Trust and believe that when an impression is made, it's made. It's like you can't deny that. And those songs, this is one of those songs, basically. It's like regardless of if you listen to that type of music or style of music or not, you receive the message because it genuinely came from your heart. It's a genuine message. You're not doing it by any strategic plan you're moved by that and so it will naturally touch people like mm -hmm. anybody and everybody of course that I will share to my whole fam and everybody I know they're going to be like that's what's up like <laughs> I heard her I loved it like I feel her that's what's up and that's what matters it's like the way that I look at it is at the end of the day being a history major it's always a small group of people that change the world it's never the, about quantity. It's about just one person or a couple people or a hand, like a hand filled with people that just understand and click and they change the entire books that we will forever read in the future. And that's what matters to me, just getting a group of people that understand and that click and that understand like I'm here for a purpose and I'm gonna do that to the day that I die and you're good you're <laughs> not gonna get you the masses will get the junk food and they'll be like yeah okay but trust and believe it's those small group of people that actually change history books and actually oh, change God. law yeah so I that's, have what, <laughs> that's what moved me yeah in terms of being a history freak I'm <laughs> like okay I can do this <laughs> thanks Sister Native, tell me yes. about back home. What's the climate like there right now? Like, how does it feel? Do you think there's a shift? Do you think? Because I don't know. I, I, I don't remember it being very um, active. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I mean, I entered. We entered. I entered protests and things like that. But I don't remember the, the groups being as strong as what I've experienced here, especially groups of women, yeah. maybe, I don't know, I'm just in a different headspace, but the societies and the situations are, are different, yeah. um, on this side of the Pacific Ocean, it's a, um, we are the, the, the final frontier in terms of being beyond the pale, so, you know, we've only known the West for 200 years, um, song lines here are what holds the spirit of everything together, and that's now that's now coming to the mainstream. So you know, we had white Australia policy until the 70s, stolen generation, all of that kind of thing. Um, in terms of the Australian continent, the nation that's Australia, which is hundreds of um, language groups and um, Aboriginal nations that are separate. Uh, so this country has been coping in a different way, as well as that because it was only 200 years ago that contact happened here in terms of the West, the, I, the, um, the concept that the colonizers had, um, the new people had, uh, had changed, which is why there's no treaty um, in Australia. So what happened here on contact just a little over 200 years ago is, um, is that they just said that there were no humans here, even though there was a 10-year war in Sydney, the city that we grew up in here, um, which is Gadigal country, Eora. So in terms of being active, the history of what happens in a space and in a place um, when there's conflict um, or when there is just, you know, 
colonial representation. This was a penal colony in, in Australia and in Sydney, the city that I'm in at the moment, the one that I was born in. Um, it's activism looks and behaves differently because in this particular country, um, within the continent of Oceania, uh, it's a, the largest island in the world to begin with. Um, there are no other indigenous people to colonize. <laughs> We're the last ones on this side. I'm actually from the Kingdom of Tonga, which is a small indigenous sovereign nation inside the South Pacific region. Um, so our continent, Oceania, is actually an ocean. So a lot of these things are factors in terms of how we respond to what is our reality at the present time. Um, with that as well, we had um, you know a lot of different influences as well as um, different types of representations of how activism happens for other marginalized people. For example, you know there was um, a nine person um, Black Panther Party in Brisbane, you know in the 60s. There was a very small um, a, I guess an economic development black power movement for Aboriginal people that came out of this city in particular, which were mostly urban blacks. We still have uninterrupted indigenous um, knowledge systems that exist here and some of those people are making artistic choices. So to answer a question from um, that, you, that you'd raised before, like when is that moment, in Oceania and especially in Australia and the, and the Pacific, and I speak primarily of Polynesia because that's that's my particular background. Um, our responses um, at the moment are survival beyond 200, 300, whatever years, um, as well as um, responding to things like uh, the the um, combining of cultures. You know, our families now are becoming multi-ethnic. Some of us, for the first time, like my family in particular, are that way. Um, like in terms of uh, coping with, you know. DNA mixing and, and people now having multiple ethnicities and multiple language groups and then um, because we had the white Australia policy in Australia some of the some of the groups that we belong to are um, you know um, belong to migrant groups that decided to only speak English you know um, and omit other perspectives you know and then because of that we have these identities that are actually other. So um, for me the moment at which you kind of pick up the banner or light the torch is upon breathing. So it's a legacy that you inherit as a woman. I'm from a matriarchal culture from, from a, a continent that is made of water. And to other people who are not from this part of the world, they don't understand um, femininity. They don't understand when love is a central um, component, is the driving force and the power of an entire culture that spans, that's actually the largest continent on the planet. It's just we're not land-based. So some of these kind of concepts are still really, really new. And then inside our families we're dealing with things like um, uh, inside um, a very, very small family unit that, that often exists inside a larger family and social network that's a community, sometimes blood ties and sometimes not. Um, we're dealing with the meeting of um, you know, matriarchal cultures and then new patriarchal cultures that we also need to respect, whether it be the, the wider culture that we're living in, being Australian society and a global society, or simply um, the decision-making processes, for example, when you start school or um, when you have friends that are from different places and have um, different types of names. So a lot of the time, um, just speaking to the video and what you were saying about, is anybody going to listen to this song? The act of creation is necessary. The act of creation is where our, our power lies. And it's um, important that you have your say right now in the time that we, that we exist in. What the industry does with that or what external forces do with that is, is always going to play um, a part in how that's received by other people. But because we're still inside only a few centuries of having this contact, we just need to be, we need to have and we need to say something and we need to be present with who we are right now because when we're looking at ourselves on a timeline of ancestry and everybody has existed for us to be here right now. Um, you just have to do it, mm. especially if 
if that if that's a calling inside you, just do the thing. If you need to find new languages or move over there or do this thing, have a boyfriend or have some kids or not have kids or whatever the thing is, you know, um, or to respond to something outside of you, or if you need to just go and take yourself away, which I've done a lot, you know, there's like big desert country here and we have pretty much in Australia the population of LA across um, a landscape that is as large as the entirety of America, uh, North America I should say. So, you know, we have a lot of space here. Um, so a lot of people use that. So sometimes um, while we might seem a little bit quiet, some of it is because there's less of us mm -hmm. um, and we need to be more of the less of us because when you're the margins, we just don't worry too much about the mainstream. Of course we're all influenced, but we just need to be who we are, whoever that's going to be, and then um, make things. I'm so happy that I have what my grandmother made, you know, she made ngapu, which is type of cloth that was made by collectives of women. Um, so I miss spaces like this. Thank you for the invitation. It's beautiful. Um, to weave stories together is um, a really powerful thing. And so when my initial reaction to your video is just one of joy and embrace, that's not small and it's not that it's not serious. It's that it's a powerful act of creation and I'm thankful. I love you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I think we should um, wrap it up because <laughs> I know you guys are all in different parts and of the world and cities and you know some people have to get babies to bed and things like that. So <laughs> does everyone want to take a moment just to say one last thing and say good night? I just I want to just quickly say that um, I think it's really important that you know I mean that's you I heard you say that it's 200 years since it had Western contact you know and uh, for the Americas it's been over 500 and you know and I think that the struggle is real right it's an everyday thing for us here and uh, and we are committed till the day we die in our own varied ways. But it, which is why I think the video and what it invites us to do, imagine and celebrate, are, is really important because we, even within the struggle, there's joy in the struggle, right? We need to find these generative moments so that we don't burn out, right? So that we don't uh, uh, feel hopeless, so that we don't uh, shut down. And so I think that's one of the most important contributions, like, like Sister Native said, whether or not whoever listens to it, when you do, as Kara said, it, it is, it's inspiring. And that is the biggest thing it does, is it inspire you, it gets you to envision, and it gets you, it feel, makes you hopeful. And that's one of the, it's, it's beautiful. We need to have more generative moments. So thank you. Yes, I agree with Martha. And the last thing that I have to say is to all of, the artivists that are out there that will watch this music video and be inspired, just make sure that you just be ready instead of trying to define define what you believe artivism really is. Instead of trying to paint a picture through reason or through logic or how you believe your life should go, don't do that. Allow life to happen. And when the opportunity comes, just be ready because you have no idea. It will be random. It will be out of whatever you thought. And I know a lot of people just get tripped up a little bit because it wasn't how they imagined and they stop it. But no, don't, don't do that. Just simply be inspired by the struggle, be inspired by the pain through the hardships and the joy and the love and the entertainment of life and be ready for whatever is for you to do on this earth. Good night. I'd just like to add that um, I think, you know, part of the beauty of the project was also being able to create this collaborative process and sort of form this community as part of this video, as, as part of this song, and so I just really want to thank you, Maya, for 
creating that space for us to share as artivists and um, also acknowledge Quetzal Flores for his production of this song and Joel uh, for his contribution as well to the song itself and um, to all of the cast and crew and it's just been a really beautiful process and I think it's, it was a priority for us as creators to really maintain that vision of liberation and the way that we that we treated each other both leading up in in you know pre-production just being really aware of how we speak to each other and really coming from a place of wanting to have healthy communication and really put all of what we are doing in our collectives and in our activist work um, into practice in this process of creating and so um, it's been it's been a really beautiful process in that sense and um, just a lot of like creativity back and forth um, with everybody on set from Lily Soto who is the director of photography to Rude Osorio who is the assistant director and Heidi Rodriguez also um, all the folks, everyone that was there on set, all the they cast, and, um, and Melendez, <laughs> who was there as well. Kara, thank you so much for participating. And um, so, so yeah, I just want, wanted to acknowledge that and thank you, Maya, for for setting that tone in that way. It was really a beautiful experience. That's why I love working with you because there's so much that I don't have to explain. You start, you start on this, you know what I mean? You start already with this understanding and it's just beautiful. Um, I just want to thank the, all the women that worked on the project. I can't even imagine how every like millisecond was studied and put together. I, 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 you like literally created another world in a, in a video. I, I was, when I clicked on it this morning, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say about this. <laughs> this is, uh, transformative in itself. Um, so I wanted to just say that because I know that I don't have this, the musical or like the editing and the, the, you know, the director and produ production skills, but it looks like countless hours of labor. So I just want to like say that we, val we value that. Like I, um, and then also um, thank you for putting this together. It feels like a luxury that shouldn't have to be a luxury to be able to talk to women across the world and like just talk about politics and like what our visions are. And so this to me is like an additional gift on top of the video. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is that um, I think in the hands of us organizers, like the this is going to live forever, right? Like we don't have to wait and see if people are going to click and 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 watch it and listen to it because. It's um, made for a purpose, and we're going to make sure that it's put to use, right, in our political work. So thank, thank you all for, for the work that you did and all your contributions. Well, thank you all for joining us and for being a part of this space. And this is the best way I feel like we can send it off into the universe. <laughs> also, a quick shout out to the animator and art director Diego Vargas. Yay! Shout out Diego. Woo, did such a wonderful job. And I shouted out Lady Soulfly for doing the whole, you know, maquillage, yeah. <laughs> and all of that. But yes, yeah, love you all very much. Thank you. I'm going to end the broadcast. Thank Have you. a lovely night. And Love Congratulations. it. Energy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Thank you. Good day. See you soon. <laughs>